meningitis, boom, tells me what to do next. Now, first thing I want you to do for meningitis is write these three on there. three things you need to write for meningitis. I wrote them on the board. Positive Brudzinski, positive Koenigs, and positive Babinski. Your patient with a positive Babinski, let me just show you real quick what in exactly is that. Again, you had to use that reflex hammer. That reflex hammer, pretend like this is your patient's foot. This is their big toe, this is their pinky toe. You took the handle of your reflex hammer, handle of reflex hammer, and you stroked across their heel and went up towards the pinky, the pinky toe. What is a positive Babinski? This is positive. Now, how are you going to remember? Babinski, bam! <laughs> Got to do something. Okay, so this bam, that's a positive Babinski. Who is allowed to have that? Children under two. Children under two. Adults are not allowed to have that shit because they were supposed to do this. When you stroke their foot, they were supposed to do this curl their toes in response, okay? Now, positive Babinski, that's what this guy has. Brudzinski is that the nurse has the patient supine, so they're laying back, and she gently pushes the head up, and when she does the whole, almost like chin to chest, but not quite, just a little bit of flexion of the neck, the patient's knee bends. I mean, not knee. I should say flexion at the hip. I don't want to say knee. I'll say flexion at the hip. That's what's on the test. Flexion of the hip. Budzinski. The reason I didn't want to say knee is because I used this word, K for Koenig, K for knee. Here, the nurse has the patient supine and she takes the patient's leg and lifts it up. And as she's lifting the leg up, they have pain behind their knee. So K for Koenig, K for knee. Now the patient that has meningitis could have bacterial or viral. If they have bacterial, it's deadly within 24 hours without treatment. If they have viral, we're sending your behind home. You're sick, but you're not deadly. Now, bacterial meningitis versus viral meningitis, we figured this out with the lumbar puncture. So here we go again. Lumbar puncture, fetal position. You are going to see on the lumbar puncture for bacterial meningitis, cloudy fluid, this is a select all, cloudy fluid, positive protein, because bacteria is a protein, positive leukocytes or white blood cells, that's why the fluid was cloudy, because of the white blood cells. And we're going to look at that fluid and test it for glucose. All cerebral spinal fluid is going to be positive for glucose. Here's the normal cerebral spinal fluid glucose count. 50 to 80 is normal. When it's bacterial meningitis, the bacteria eat the sugar. So it's 30. That's how we can tell the difference between bacterial and viral. Bacterial meningitis patient, the sugar content is 30. Viral meningitis, 
the fluid is clearer. It's not as cloudy, if at all. And the count to the glucose is 50 to 80. Viral meningitis, 50 to 80 for a glucose level. And it's not necessarily cloudy. There's a third issue I want you to write down because it looks exactly like meningitis. That would be encephalitis. All of these patients appear to be the same. They all have nuchal rigidity. All three, viral, bacterial, meningitis, and encephalitis. So Kelly Dietrich went to the ER. Her mother's a nurse. She was 16, which is the average age of meningitis is 18. Kelly Dietrich, her mother took her to the OR, I mean the ER. When she took her to the ER, she explained her daughter's very sick, high fever, yada, yada, yada. The resident, clueless in Cleveland, and the nurse, actually more clueless, because that's where we come in, they sent Ke uh, Kelly home and said, she's got the flu. Just give her fluids, lay her on the couch, watch her fever. Her mother's a nurse. When Kelly got in the car, her mom was talking. Mom, stop talking. Now, you know, you don't tell your mom to stop talking. Stop talking. Why did she say that? Because if you look at the sheet, it should say phonophobia. You can't take sounds. You can't take loud sounds, any sounds. You need quiet, please. She told her mother to stop talking. Phonophobia, while in the car, she just kept doing this. Looking at a light will really hurt your eyes. Photophobia. She gets home. Her mother puts her on the couch. She gives her the fluids like the doctor said, and she's watching her fever, which at the time they went to the ER was high grade. Kelly wakes up after a fairly long nap, and when she wakes up, she sits up and vomits. Projectile vomiting. It may be on there, you may have to write it. I don't remember it's on there. So write it down, projectile vomiting. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Viral meningitis, bacterial meningitis, and encephalitis. All have nuchal rigidity, all have a severe headache. Kelly had a real bad headache. All have a severe headache. All of them have photo and phono and all the shit. And they really, really feel the same. So it's hard to tell. Her mother took her back to the hospital. There was a new doctor on call, a new resident had came in. The lady physician looked at Kelly and said, do me a favor, put your chin to your chest. Kelly said she did it and she screamed from the pain, it was so horrible. And she said, oh fuck, she has meningitis. Get her started with the uh, LP, lumbar puncture. So she has, you know, she wanted to do a lumbar puncture, she decided against it. But I mean, this is what I'm trying to tell you, nuchal rigidity. Nuchal means neck, rigidity, stiffness. Maybe your test says neck stiffness. That's what's on that handout. Maybe it says nuchal rigidity. You see the neck stiffness. I can see it from here. Okay, so you're going to put nuchal rigidity. Now, encephalitis. How will that cerebral spinal fluid look? It will not be cloudy. Write it. Cerebral spinal fluid will be clear. There is no infection here. It's just inflammation. There won't be any white blood cells. There won't be all this crap. It'll be clear. What caused it? West Nile or uh, measles or mumps, some virus could have caused it. The number one cause in Ohio and Pennsylvania is West Nile. We have an epidemic here. Just like we have Lyme's disease, it's crazy. Okay. Now, so encephalitis is inflammation, not infection. You have same signs and symptoms, nuchal rigidity. It could be Lyme's disease or West Nile or a viral condition. The treatment is acyclovir as soon as possible, within three days. Acyclovir within three days. So we did the lumbar puncture, 
We also send the cerebral spinal fluid away for something called PCR, PCR testing, encephalitis, send it away for PCR. Meningitis is, an epi is a, a condition of college kids is because they're in such close quarters. And these college kids, average age of meningitis is 18. Yes, there is a vaccine, but many kids don't get it, don't ask. So there is a vaccine. If someone had a roommate in college with this, they're going to be treated with rifampin or Cipro. Write them both down. Close contacts with meningitis, bacterial meningitis. Get rifampin or Cipro. The patient is considered no longer contagious if they've had 24 hours of antibiotics. After 24 hours of antibiotics, they're no longer considered contagious. This is droplet precautions. Don't forget the classic three. Patient has nuchal rigidity, severe headache, high grade fever. The patient's no longer contagious. So the classic three is nuchal rigidity, R. Nuchal rigidity, high grade fever, higher than 102 and a severe headache. Everything else is flu-like symptoms. It's kind of subtle. It's easy to miss. That same lady I told you about with the husband found seizing under the car, they lost her seven-year-old to meningitis two years earlier. This cannot imagine the tragedy. Okay, uh, turn the page. Now, this is what you're gonna write on that page. Look at this. You're gonna write every single one of these drugs. Tegretol. What? I think. Wait, I think. It's just so, it's so many meds. It's a lot of fucking meds. And they told me that Zenora's a bitch on me. Yes. There's <laughs> some confirmation. Tegretol, Dilantin, Lamictal, Topamax. The last two, Lamictal, and Topamax. Topamax is also used for migraines. You need to add one after Topamax and put Depakote. You should be on seizures. Oh, okay. Oh, and I'm Oh, and I didn't say it, but I think you know it. Meningitis is seizure precautions. I'm sure you know that, but I don't want to say Meningitis is seizure precautions. That's why seizures follows right after. Okay. Now, here's our deal. Tagritol is also used for gillian barre So every last one of these drugs have an extra use. So gillian barre Lamictal, you don't care, but bipolar. Migraines, bipolar. I will put migraines because you do care about that. With Lamictal, you can't crush it. Another drug that was on your test, I'm surprised I don't have it, you can kick my butt for that. Uh, it's a newcomer to your test, Keppra. Did you guys learn about that one? Yeah. No? Yeah. Yes. Oh boy, well then you better start because there's a reason I have it. Star. Capra. Okay, so that's another one. Now, this patient can have an aura right before it happens. Remember, when the patient starts to seize, turn the other side. That's not the first nursing action, but that is going to be on your test. The first nursing action is to guide them to a floor flat surface, move everything out their way, number two. Number three, turn them on their side. 
but I think it's going to be turn them on this side. After the seizure, same shit, turn them on their side. So turn them on their side no matter what, you know. People die from seizures for three reasons. Put all three down, either head injury when they fall, that's number one. Number two, aspiration, because most patients are either going to throw up during or after. And number three, hypoxia, because you're not doing that great a job of breathing. You are not swallowing when you're having a seizure. You're not necessarily breathing when you're having a seizure. You're not breathing as well as you'd like to anyway. If you have something called status epilepticus, that means you can't stop seizing. Status epilepsy, right? Epilepticus. Status epilepticus. Status. The status of your patient is epilepticus. You also have something called status asthmaticus from 1600. But this is status epilepticus. This patient most likely stopped taking their anticonvulsant abruptly. Just ran out of insurance, lost their job, some shit. But they stopped abruptly. And now we can't make them stop seizing. This is a ventilator. Patient needs a ventilator. When all that crazy shit happened, patient needs a ventilator. 